book about what science knows because I felt there was no simple and overall introduction explaining why science has been so successful, why it knows so much of what we, that it does know. So when you go to the dentist, you have a good opportunity while the drill is in your mouth cavity to contemplate what it would be like if, you didn't, if science didn't know what it claims to know and we had to deal with the uh, dentistry of 100 years ago. Science has discovered an enormous amount in those 200 years, including how to deal with your uh, d dental problems and how to do, deal with it fairly painlessly. And, uh, but nevertheless, there are many people that are very unhappy and very resentful about the successes of science, our postmodernist friends and so forth, and some of our left-wing friends who uh, uh, talk a great deal about not only the misuses of science, but they allege that uh, science can't know these things that it claims to know. So there have been many answers to them on, this, on particular matters, but it seemed to me there wasn't something that really stood back and explained uh, from the ground up how science knows its simple and complex facts. So uh, it seemed to me especially that other books attempting to defend science were not full-blooded enough in their objectivity. And in particular, they hadn't appreciated the logical nature of the relation between evidence and hypothesis. So, uh, in my view, the reason science can explain from the ground up why it knows what it does know is that there is an objective relation between the facts, uh, out there, the observational facts, and the theories that science knows. It's something like uh, the relation between, pro it's called proof beyond reasonable doubt in, uh, in law. So, uh, people accept that in mathematics, people understand that uh, mathematical truths and uh, they, they're the gold standard of knowledge and I'm very keen to emphasize those uh, in, in my book, partly because I'm a mathematician. But in, in that case, you have mathematical proof and things are very clear. But in uh, empirical sciences, things are a little bit more fuzzy and you have to deal with probabilities. But uh, if you accept that probabilities are about logic, then that is that there's an objective logical relationship between all observed swans are white and uh, your theory that all swans are white, then uh, you can be very confident, though as it turned out not 100% confident, in your theory. Uh, so science needs to uh, explain that it knows some things well and it also needs to accept that it doesn't know some other things well, like its theories of global, system, global complex systems like uh, global warming and perhaps evolution, perhaps in those cases science doesn't know quite as much as it says. Nevertheless, in something like uh, a theory of the circulation of the blood, things are absolutely clear. That's, uh, it's been discovered 400 years ago. The evidence has just got stronger and stronger for it and it's never going to become undiscovered. Uh, uh, some particular things I wanted, so after that having uh, put in, in the first chapters, uh, explain the, uh, the logical theory of evidence and how that supports the truths of science, I went on to uh, survey the different kinds of knowledge and the different kinds of science. So for example, knowledge is very different in uh, mathematics uh, and the formal sciences. I wanted to emphasize that uh, the last 70 years or so of science has seen science shift its center of gravity from the natural sciences like uh, physics, chemistry, and biology to what are, there's, there's no definite name for them, but they call the formal or mathematical sciences, things like computer science, statistics, operations research, timetabling, and things like that, where it's much more a matter of pure thought than uh, observation, though there are computer experiments to help your intuition. So I wanted to explain how there's knowledge uh, with the help of computers and mathematical proof in those areas, and then look at uh, experiment as traditionally understood in the natural science, and go on to compare those with the social sciences. So, uh, in, in my view, the, if you have a logical theory of evidence, it applies just as well to social sciences, so that uh, historical truths, for example, are just as uh, applicable. Uh, the, the way logic and uh, evidence and logic works, uh, works exactly the same in them. And that's the reason why uh, a lot of the theory of logic and e logical evidence has been invented by lawyers who are uh, well, perhaps the first people in uh, trying to work out what happened from the evidence that we now have. Uh, so, so I did that. But then I also wanted to look at uh, 
some limits to science. Uh, so I wanted to look at the theories of uh, uh, evolution and uh, global warming, where in my view the current theories are the best in the business, but nevertheless not so conclusively established that uh, they, the experts shouldn't be a little more polite to those skeptics who are uh, raising a few uh, serious uh, questions. And then I wanted to look at the actual, uh, in principle, limits to science. Such, uh, in, I would say that there are uh, uh, some things in the world that are in their essence beyond the limits of science, in, in particular consciousness and ethics. Uh, in ethics, uh, whether something is right or wrong, or whether our lives have worth or something, what is the meaning of life, they're just the kind of questions that science can't answer because, uh, for the reasons uh, talked about by David Hume in his separation between is and ought. Science is about what is, and uh, what is can never wholly determine what ought to be the case.